Snack World is, admittedly, a game I knew very little about before playing it for this review. It wasn't until I was about halfway through it that I decided to look at its history, and when I did, I was pretty surprised to find out that there was already a manga, an anime series, and a 3DS game. How did I not know about this? It made sense, though, in a certain way. When I first saw Snack World on Switch, it looked like a ported over 3DS game to me. That isn't necessarily to say it looks bad. Textures are clear, and the game runs great even when there's a ton of stuff going on on the screen, but it is a simpler title. It has that feeling that it was designed for shorter play sessions, which of course fits the Switch very well, especially in handheld mode. After listening to the pork chop infused theme song, I had some questions, like, what is a snack in the context of the game universe? And can I play as a sentient pork chop? And can I have a pork chop? Sadly, no, I did not discover any pork chops, but I did find out what a snack is, and it's basically a monster. As you fight monsters and gain familiarity with them, you'll have the opportunity to take a snack shot of them and add them to your pocket, meaning you'll be able to summon them for short periods of time, or you can add them directly to your party, allowing them to join quests alongside you. Either way, these snacks will level up and gain experience, making them stronger as you battle alongside them. As the full title implies, Snack World is a dungeon crawling game, but before you're allowed to skulk around looking for loot, you have to create your own character. The character creation process was fine. You don't have super fine control over your character, there are no depth sliders or crazy options here. Instead, you have more of a pick-apart affair, where you select pre-made noses, eyes, and hairstyles from a list, but it works fine for a game like this. Snack World's art style is fairly simple, kind of like Animal Crossing mixed with Adventure Time, and it's one of my favorite things about the game, especially since the narrative strikes a similarly silly tone. Snack World begins with your newly created character waking up outside the kingdom with a case of amnesia. You're immediately taken to see King Papaya, whose daughter Melonia asks if you can stay. This basically sets up the rest of the game. For main story quests, you'll be sent to fetch some item for Melonia, only to have her lose interest before you return. I never felt pulled in by the story, and I suspect most won't. It isn't compelling, but I don't necessarily think that it's supposed to be. Like most good games, Snack World's appeal lies in its gameplay. It's those moments when you're out questing that actually make the game interesting. There are two types of quests, story quests and side quests. Initially I thought you picked up side quests by talking with random town folk, but instead you unlock them as you level up. I found it a bit confusing at first, and thought I wasn't actually picking up side quests for the first couple of hours of my playthrough, because the story quests that you get from NPCs are optional, meaning you can complete a chapter without doing them. To me, this is the very definition of a side quest, but Snack World seems to think differently. Picking a quest is fairly easy, and once you're set to go, you're in for a pretty good time. Combat is really fun and has some unique elements to it that I enjoyed. Attacks are really snappy, even with heavy weapons, and you're forced to rotate weapons often as each weapon you carry has a set amount of points you can use, called JP or Jara points. JP act as sort of stamina for your weapon. The more you use the weapon, the more they deplete, and once they're gone, you can't attack effectively with that weapon for a while until it recharges. On top of that, you need to be mindful of how much time you're spending in each floor of each dungeon, as a nearly invincible enemy named Popsicle will come to hunt you down if you take too long. I often found myself having the most fun when I was frantically searching for an exit while trying to avoid him. Each chapter also contains at least one randomized dungeon, meaning you'll never have the same experience twice. I really liked this, especially as I would sometimes have to replay a quest multiple times to find a weapon or an item I was looking for. You're allowed to carry up to six weapons, and every enemy is weak to a specific weapon type, meaning you'll need to optimize your loadout every time you head out for a quest. Fortunately, there's an option to automatically apply the best possible loadout for your current quest. I made use of this constantly as figuring out what would be optimal felt like a chore more often than not. Once you've departed on a quest, you can't change your loadout unless you find a special NPC that can do it for you. I thought I would find this annoying, but I liked it as it forced me to consider what to take along with me, and added some difficulty to what I initially assumed would be an easy game aimed at young children. Once you do find the right combination of weapons, dispatching enemies is fairly easy, but weapons aren't necessarily easy to find. There's a weapon store that you can purchase them from, but they're typically prohibitively expensive and the game is very stingy with its currency, called Gravies. 
Getting 100 gravies can take up to 10 quests or more in some cases, and weapons typically hover around that price for decent ones. If weapons were the only thing you had to purchase in the game, that would be more easily forgivable, but there's a lot to spend your hard-earned cash on in Snack World. For me, the number one place to sink money into was gear. To say Snack World has a convoluted gear system is, in my estimation, a bit of an understatement. Defensive gear gives you boosts, and each item has its own passive abilities, such as giving you a strength boost or increasing your drop rate, which isn't too bad on its own, but then you have to take colors into account. As you level up your items, you gain the ability to add colors to them. From there, if you want to increase your drop rate, you have to match the color of your weapons to that of the enemies you'll be fighting, and if you want the absolute best drop rate, you also have to wear clothes that match the style recommendations of the day, which can only be found hidden in a smartphone menu. For me, this just resulted in my giving up and playing the game as though those mechanics didn't exist. For some, this might be a welcome added layer of depth to an otherwise simplistic dungeon crawler, but I was happy to ignore its existence entirely. Less easy to ignore, though, was the overworld. Whenever you aren't questing, you're in town, and it's here that the experience truly begins to fall apart for me. Walking around Tutti Frutti, to put it simply, isn't fun, and I have a feeling level 5 is aware of this. There's only really a handful of places to go, and you can open up a menu to fast travel between them, despite the town itself being rather small. I almost never visited shops, as I seldom had the money to spend thanks to the game's poor economy. The inn was only a place to look for quests on occasion, but is still part of the menu somehow, and the fortune teller would give you some free items once every real world day, so there's seldom a reason to visit her. Finally, there's multiplayer. I had hoped that this would save Snack World for me. Multiplayer could have made the game much more fun, but you're just limited to side quests, meaning you can't advance the story with a friend. Setting it up is easy enough, but I found that being limited to a small subset of quests made it difficult for me to recommend a friend join me in checking it out. On a technical level, Factor 5 did well here as there was no noticeable lag while playing, and jumping in and out of games was pretty easy to do. After spending a dozen or so hours with Snack World and completing the story, I'm not feeling anxious to return. I went in hoping to find something more akin to a fantasy life sequel, and instead found a dungeon crawler that relied a lot on random drops. While the combat is really fun and can be immensely satisfying at times, the overcomplicated gear system, color matching, and lifeless town left me with overall mixed feelings on Snack World. For some, collecting every snack in Jara and optimizing your build will prove addictive, but for me, it just fell flat. Well, that about wraps up our review of Snack World The Dungeon Crawl Gold for Nintendo Switch. As always, thank you so much for watching, and make sure to subscribe to Game Explained for many more reviews just like this one. Ring that notification bell to be the first to know every time we upload a new video, and I'll see you next time.